Oh, uh, we've been waiting on our next guest. He's one of the most powerful and creative people in all of Hollywood. His movies have grossed more than a billion dollars worldwide. And among his many hits, oh, we love him. Girls Trip, Night School, Straight Outta Compton. And he's killing it on the small screen, too, with the hits Ready to Love and Bigger. We want to welcome to the show the incredibly talented CEO of Will Packer Productions, Mr. Will Packer. Welcome to BNC. And we noted you're in <laughs> Los Angeles, so you got up really early to start your day with us. So thank you for that, Will. Um, you know, we just love you. We rave about you on this show. Um, yeah. First and foremost, uh, happy Father's Day. And congrats, mm -hmm. our Thank Hawks you. beat the Sixers. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I know you were probably they up did. watching that. Um, just your thoughts on the game. Yeah. Hey, listen, one time for all my ATL Hawks fans, I think this is this is great for Atlanta. Atlanta needs some good news right mm -hmm. now. You know, it's yes, a city I love and, and uh, has done, um, has always been very supportive of me. Um, but, you know, the Hawks have always been the afterthought. It was like the Falcons and the Braves and then the Hawks somewhere down the line. So to see them coming up and doing what they do, I know it's a lot of ATL folks that's excited. We had it's not over yet, but no matter what, this has been an amazing season. We've overachieved, right? So um, I'm just really happy for the team, you know, for Trey and John Collins, Kevin Herter, that whole squad, the owners, Tony yeah. Resser, Jamie Gertz, a close friends of mine. I'm really happy for them. So, I mean, I just, it's good. It's good. Atlanta needs this. Atlanta needs some good news. Yeah, we do. Man, let's celebrate at Magic City, get some lemon pepper wings with Lou. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Atlanta Hawks <laughs> getting it done. <laughs> Good sports here for you, Tampa Bay that. Bucks for the Super Bowl. I don't know what he's speaking of, Sharon. Of course, Sharon. we know nothing, know nothing about, about don't, that don't at all. Don't muddy him up, hey, Mike. Do you. Great weekend, Will. I know. Great weekend. Juneteenth, Father's Day, your Hawks win. That's great. But I, I want to talk to you about your career, man, because we just love you. And, and I said that people like you need to get more attention. I know you're behind the scenes and you enjoy that. But you need to get more attention because you got this ability, man, to show a full range of the black mm -hmm. experience. You can remake Roots, and then you can come back and give us Ready to Love. I enjoy that, man. What, what, how important is it to show the full spectrum of black people and not just the black oppression or the black trauma that we experience all the time? Yeah. Um, first of all, Mike, Sharon, I'm so appreciative of you guys having me on. I really am, uh, you know, giving somebody like me this shine i'm appreciative the whole bnc team reality though is that i'm gonna be honest with you mike i don't need any attention got all the attention i need good where i'm at i don't need any more i like being behind the scenes one thing i would say though is just for like you know the next generation coming up i do like for them to see yeah. that it's not just about being in front of the camera not just about being an actor or mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. rapper you know in entertainment um, in front of the camera. There are a lot of folks making moves behind the camera and not enough of them look like me, right? So I do want people to know there's an opportunity to be down there and be a real mover and shaker and power broker behind the scenes. Now, Mike, you talked about imagery. You talked about black trauma. You talked about, you know, the importance of having options outside of that. And, you know, it's a complex issue because I certainly respect my fellow filmmakers who want to tell their stories and whatever story you want to tell, um, I think you ought to be able to. That's what opportunity in this industry is all about. But, you know, you're right. There's certainly a fatigue when it comes to telling stories around black people and trauma. Now, some of them are important, right? Because you, you can't mm -hmm. be you came from. I'm very proud of the work we did on the, um, the television remake of Roots, uh, which a lot of people saw. And the whole point of that was to make Roots for a new generation who really don't know their mm -hmm. history and don't know you know, that we come from kings and queens in Africa and our journey um, in America as black people, I think it's important for the young generation to always never, ever forget that. But at the same time, I also want to be able to create some content that's uplifting, that's got some joy. You know, you talked about, you know, my show like Bigger, which is just really a comedy about, you know, 30 somethings yeah. living in Atlanta, trying to figure out life, you know, and making a lot of mistakes along the way, but, you know, having fun doing it. Um, Made in Love, you know, that's the number one uh, show on Friday nights, and, and I'm very proud of that. That's a dating show, you know, for anybody out there looking for love, you know, ready to love. We actually going to D.C. next season, so you know that's going to be interesting because mm -hmm. I know I know they don't know how to act in D.C., so that's going to make for some good television. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just, just trying to mix it up, trying to do some everything. 
We love it. Yeah, we, we um, interviewed some of your actors um, from Bigger, and they said, you know what, they were nervous to meet you, but that, that smile that you seem to always be flashing, and yeah. why not? You're Will Packer. Life is great, right? But I want to talk about how you champion others, women, people of color behind this screen, because directors, wardrobe, um, there's mm -hmm. so many that have stories where you've mentored, not just given an opportunity, you've mentored them and you've mm -hmm. made careers and it's clearly intentional, but I want to know where that began for you. Wow. You know, it's a good question. It's very intentional as I, because I think it has to be. I think it began with um, this sense of responsibility. I know how far I have come and how hard it is to make it in this industry. Um, and I know my journey has been, um, you know, not without challenges and pitfalls, but I would not have made it if I didn't have folks that supported me and folks that championed me and folks that, you know, if nothing else, just told me you're good enough, you can do this. Well, a lot of them, I'll be honest with you. Um, but mm -hmm. the point in growth, the point of growth is that there should be more people now telling the next generation you can do it right? You are enough. Mm -hmm. Here's an opportunity for you. I have to be one of those cheerleaders, Sharon. You know, I have to be somebody that's using my power for good and to bring on other, like if I'm just, you know, doing what I can do and just telling stories that are only specific to me, right? I'm not hiring other folks. I'm not hiring folks that look like me and giving that next generation of storytellers an opportunity. What am I doing? Like, what is it for? Like, yeah. you know, I can, I can have a lot of yeah. success and I have had, and that, that's a blessing, but at the end of the day, you know, it's about legacy. And I'm at that point in my mm -hmm. career where I think a lot about legacy. And I think a lot about who am I able to to put on, you know? Um, and speak, speaking of being put on, Mike, I don't know if you know that your co-host, she had a nice cameo in a Will Packer series, and she represented very <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I'm she was lessons. Uh, really? Oh, yeah, I'm you taking know, lessons she, she to the next star. opportunity. She was so comfortable in hair and makeup and wardrobe, and he came in, hit her lines, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Robin Givens. Like it was nothing. So you just better keep an eye on Sharon. I, I don't know how it. long she's going to be behind at the news desk. So I think she might have some uh, other aspirations. One more shot. <laughs> Sharon, Sharon, you know I, she's I got that superstar potential. She, she, yeah, we, we can tell she wants it. And we're going to give it to her. I know you're going to give her the opportunity. And, and we love you for that because you are giving opportunities to a lot of uh, mm -hmm. great people. Uh, and a lot of great people want to work for you. I'm talking about the Kevin Hart's of the world, the Steve Harvey's. I hear you yep. just doing a film with Idris Elba. Um, but you, and I just yeah. said, you're, you're Midas because everything you touch, it appears, turns to gold. Ten movies that open number one at the box office. As a producer, how do you decide which one is the right thing and how do you know a hit from something that's not going to make it or not? I mean, I mean, you, you just have that, 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 that sense of, of, of an ability to know what's going to be a hit. Where does that come from? I appreciate you, Mike. I, I, you know, listen, you never really know anybody that tells you that they do. They lie and don't believe that. But I will say a lot of it is instinctual. And for me, I always think about the audience first. You know, as Hollywood folks, we can get real caught up in what we think is cool, right? And we can get real caught up in, um, you know, the stuff that our peers want to see. And that's just what happens when you're in an industry that is kind of insulated from the rest of the world. Um, I like to get out of the Hollywood bubble and be around real people and get to, to know what real people want and what they're looking for. And that has served me well in my career. It really has. I have, um, but at the end of the day, you know, the power is with the audience. That's another thing we can't forget, right? Mm -hmm. Like the things that audiences come out in mass and support, you more of them, period. I hear people all the time, you know, telling me like, well, why don't you have a show like this or a movie like that? And I'm like, well, you know, that's a good idea, but I don't know that people are gonna see that because, you know, mm -hmm. there have been people that may have tried something in that arena that didn't work, you know? So I, I just, my point in that is just that the power always rests with the audience. People like me are conduits, and certainly I instinctually, I have a sense of what I think people want to see, but ultimately the power is with the people. And I've been very fortunate to have been supported by audiences, but Mike, it's really about people. I've always felt like audiences, especially black audiences, have not truly realized their power. They're starting to now, certainly in terms of, you know, how vocal we are, um, about stuff that we like and support and stuff that we don't like. Um, but I've always felt like just from a Hollywood standpoint, black audiences have not been as active 
in realizing mm -hmm. the, that they have in controlling the types of stuff that Hollywood makes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we're running out of time. I can talk to you all day, but before I go, I, I want to give you credit because you're just a, a likable person. People love you. You're smiling all the time. You just got great energy. People want to work man. with you, as I mentioned before. But what I like about that is even off camera, but even behind it, the, the love you have for your wife, it's something that I aspire yeah. to achieve with my wife. And I want to, I, I think you're a great example of what black love is all about. Uh, even your DJing, you, you, you guys just seem like you just have so much genuine fun together. Talk about the relationship you have and, and the partnership that you have uh, professionally and personally with your wife. Man, that's real. I'm so glad you brought that up. And first of all, shout out to your amazing wife, Mike. You know, uh, amazing <laughs> businesswoman, an entrepreneur who's uh, got some great things in the work herself also. So stay tuned mm -hmm. for that. Um, but, you yes. know, Mike, I'm glad you brought up my wife because here's what I will say. Like our relationship, people have said that to me before. They like, I see y'all on Instagram. Y'all can't be that happy. But bruh, <laughs> honestly, like this is what happens when you marry your homie, your best friend, yes. your confidant. Like yeah. that's we roll. That's just really how we roll, man. And it is. Yeah. Um, I would not be where I am if I didn't have that. I'm telling you now. Like I just oh, have wow. to have wow. somebody that is mm. supportive of me and I support her and it's a true partnership. Out of everything that I've done, yeah. that's the thing I got right. Like, oh, yeah, wow. I got a nice movie career, but I'm telling you now, it all comes from yeah. the fact that I have an amazing, positive relationship. That's a true friendship at the house. Cause mm. y'all know if the house not right, the rest mm -hmm. of the world can't mm -hmm. be right. Is it nothing. So I have that nothing. foundation at home and it's, it's genuine happiness. So I, yeah, I'm very blessed. Shout out to, to Heather, oh, well, my yeah. queen, Preach. my rock. Oh, that is beautiful. That's how we talk. You know what She's I'm saying? beautiful. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's, and y'all yeah, can't she, fake that. You, you can't point. possibly fake that. Mm -hmm. We are out of time, but I got to do this because you know the BNC headquarters, Tallahassee. We have so many young people behind the scenes who, you know, fam you. They love you. Yes. They want to know the one piece of advice on how you mm -hmm. you just really made it and you make it work every day. Here's the thing, believe in yourself. That is the thing I will leave with you. And it sounds cliche, but it's really not. This is a time and in an industry that will beat you down and tell you what you're not, tell you what you don't have, tell you what you're not prepared for, tell you what skill sets that you're missing. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in you. All that may be true, but never ever give up. Believe in yourself, right? Don't give the power for your success to anybody else. I don't care if it's Will Packer, Tyler Perry, whoever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You control your own success, your own destiny. So somebody watching this right now, who's trying to figure out their way, never give up, believe in yourself. There were a lot of times before I had success, when things look dark, when things look bleak, but we never ever gave up. I never stopped believing in myself. That's the thing I wanna pass along to somebody that's watching right now. Hey, Will, Great they're, they're saying it's a hard rap, but if yeah. Idris Elba's co-star drops out, I'm your girl right here. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget me. I'll just stand in. I would I'm take just, a note of that. Just, you know what I'm Great saying? Stuff. Just let me know. <laughs> no, she would. Study you up. You got to watch Hollywood hit maker. She, she's ready to Hollywood. Well, I know. Keep her at being. Look, look, she's ready. She's been ready. She, she's Hollywood right now. <laughs>